I think the key thing this morning, Trevor, is that, that we can confirm that our approaches from potential investors, people who want to get in there, get involved, put money into West Ham United. That's key. That's key at this particular time. It is. I mean, listen, it's an attractive club. You know, I think the branding that they've done, uh, the new stadium that they've got a loan deal for, um, I, they, they shouldn't be in debt, in my opinion. I mean, it's difficult to say that after la the last 18 months. But when you sell your stadium um, for what uh, West Ham sold their stadium for and then uh, become, what, £100, £150 million pounds in debt mm. um, quite soon after that, I, I think that's poor business. But you couldn't plan for uh, the pandemic we've just been through. Um, just going back to what my fundamentals were, you know, You've had a good season. Off the back of that, you want to reinvest into the players. Well, you You've say they one. shouldn't be in debt, Trev, and I'm not suggesting that's not right. But last year, or the 2019 accounts, they lost 25 yeah. million quid. Yeah. Right? And I know that West Ham fans will be suddenly sucking in on their lemons right now, going absolutely apoplectic because they've got this view of Sullivan and Gold. But unfortunately, clubs are in debt. Most clubs are in debt. It's the level of debt that you talk about which is the issue – because if you're buy, if, say, if I buy a player, Trev, right, and that player is if Arsenal buy a player and put him on a five-year contract, right, and they pay that five-year contract, they pay the seventy million quid for Pepe over five years, they're in debt for that yeah. player over five years, and that goes to their debt situation. So it depends what the debt looks like. Yeah. If it's debt to the owners, if it's debt to the owners that isn't being called in, if it's debt on players that will be serviced through cash flow, or if it's debt because the business is ultimately hemorrhaging, bleeding money every year, it depends what that debt looks like. And yeah. West Ham isn't hemorrhaging, bleeding money every well, year. Well, it will do this year. I mean, I, I would think that West Ham will lose 50 million quid this year. But again, you know, you look you look back on decisions that have been made, bringing in P Pellegrini and, and allowing the yeah, players they're horrible, to... Yeah, they're horrible costs. Yeah. Philippe be Anderson better. being bought for 40 don't, million quid. Don't leave that with the manager. Be better. You know, have your scouting system... It's completely different from the manager. The manager is to manage the team. Have, have a scouting system in place that you believe in, that you're going to back, and that are going to bring top players into the football club. Because well, I thought David Sullivan and David allow, Gold if, did have that. It was called the Rothman's Guide for Players, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but also, another thing, you know, listen, if you've got a house and it's not for sale and people start putting bids in, you're going to ask for more than that of anyway. Of course. West Ham is not for sale at the moment, so the fact that people are coming bidding, they've got to go way and above five, six hundred million pounds for me. Yeah, yeah. One thing, one thing we do know, Simon, before we leave this, and uh, a, well, let me just a go lot back of West Ham fans listening to this, carry on. Well, if you say that, Trev, why would you? Why would Newcastle be being sold for three hundred? If that deal happens, which it, I don't think it will, why would Newcastle be valued at three hundred million quid with a stadium that they own with fifty-two thousand fans, with the same kind of launch pad sequence opportunity that any Premier League club would have if they've got the history, the heritage, the support base, the association with the Premier League. Why would West Why would West Ham be worth twice, three times what Newcastle is worth simply because of the geographic location of London? I think in London, the minds of people from Malaysia. Well, I think London because it's an international mega city. A any player um, who's looking to come to England, I mean, most players, most foreign players, how far is it from London? London is an iconic city that people want to live in. Simple as that. And Newcastle's not without being disrespectful. Mm. Sammy, before we finish this, uh, there's a couple of questions here from West Ham fans that I will ask you from them. When you hear that, the, and uh, you know, this is what I was told this morning, the people who bid for West Ham, they're not football people that were described to me, they're property people. Yeah. Anything involving property, should that uh, initiate alarm, alarm bells? Well, you could turn around and say, with the greatest respect in the world, that before Sheikh Mansour revealed himself to be an investor in football, he could have been considered not to be a football person. But because he subsequently invested a lot of money, Roman Abramovich, before he came through the door, no one ever heard of him. No one had, he had no association with football. So he could have not been considered a football person. And sometimes the most divisive, disingenuous, wretched people are football people. Mm. So consider carefully what you think a football person is. <laughs> but a lot of football deals are predicated upon real estate value. Now, it depends if a proportion of real estate deals are going to benefit the football club or solely benefit the owner. If you look at the, you know, if you look at the allegations that are made about people like Ron Martin at Southend, I know, go down the pyramid. You look at the time when Portsmouth were in administration, and everybody that was coming to buy Portsmouth was looking at the ransom strip, the land behind yeah. the stadium at Fratton Park. Mm -hmm. Look, it's about how a deal gets hung together. Most people that own a football club, with few exceptions, I was a Crystal Palace supporter. My father played for the club. I lived a hundred yards away from the stadium. There ain't many of me about. And most people that buy football clubs could traditionally not be called football people. Yeah. They're people that perhaps get involved for yeah. a variety of reasons. Yeah. 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 
Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.